All right, hello everyone. Uh, before we start today's tutorial on presets and records, I just want to show everyone this thread on SEG Mapster. It contains all the latest uh, editor updates, uh, undocumented ed editor updates. There are probably going to be more added later in this thread. So check it out on stgmapster.com. Stmaster is also a great site for other info. It has lots of tutorials and lots of other neat stuff for anyone who's making ST2 maps, so check out the site. It's a very active community. So what I'm going to do today is kind of remake what we did in the um, spawning tutorial. I'm going to remake just the data structure because I found a much better way of doing this with presets and records. Uh, presets and records are really neat things. Um, that you can use in your map to uh, organize your data better. So I'm going to add a record here, wave info, and I'm going to add a preset, wave, uh, special wave mod. I'm not going to organize this into folders because this is just going to be a quick, less than 10 minute tutorial. So special wave mod is going to store our settings for what kind of special wave it is, like is it a speed wave, or does it have extra HP, does it have region, does it region HP, or does it have hardened shield, or whatever. Well, it's those four are enough for demonstrating how it works. Um, then we're going to go into wave info here, and we're going to add unit type. Obviously, it's going to be unit type as a type of unit for our wave. I set it to five. We're going to have unit amount, once again, five, so max five units, kind of like we did in the other tutorial. Um, special wave mod is going to be the preset that we created here. So we scroll up the preset, and we go here, I hit S, and it jumps down to S, and I find special wave mod is our preset. I'll show off how it works in a second. And um, yeah, that's fine for now. We don't need more for a demo. You could add more. Imagine if you have 20 settings or so for your waves. It's going to be a lot cleaner to have them all inside this record instead of having them all down on the left side here. Then maybe you have 20 settings for your UI and so on. So this is mainly an organization thing. Uh, programmers will recognize this as kind of um, maybe a mini class with just variables, or uh, depending on your language. Um, Anyway, before I babble away and lose track of what I'm doing, let's just add an action. So add wave data. I'm going to skip the add wave like I did in the other tutorial, but I'm still going to need two variables. First of all, waves and max wave. Max wave is just going to be an integer. And waves, I'm going to set to record. Since we only have one record, it's just going to be default to wave info. And this is going to be an array of 100, so we can store 100 waves. So if you don't follow, don't worry. That was just a setup, and now I'm going to start explaining. So what is the benefit of this here? Um, let's say we have a, let's start with this one. What's so good about presets? Well, let's say we want to take a parameter. Uh, wave mod into this function, and we set it to preset, and we take our special wave info, special wave mod. Now, if we go and add this function in here, and you double click here, you have your preset values here. And this will make it a lot easier to keep track of, especially if you only have a few possible values that should be sent into a function, or a variable should only be able to be set to a few special values. Let's say you have a camera that you can switch between three settings. So you add a preset with three settings, and you store it in an array for each player with your preset. And that way, it's a lot easier to keep track of instead of having an integer that says one, two, three, depending on which setting you're at. If you use a preset, you have a logical name, so it looks better in the editor. Just look here, if I pass in here, data, it will say region, instead of me having to uh, put in like um, wave mod 4, 
which is going to be then region or whatever, and no one can read it. Of course, you can send in the behaviors directly instead of using this. This was just an example. I would probably just have used behaviors for special wave mode, but just think for other things you could use this for, for instance, camera settings or anything. Presets will make your life a lot easier. If you need to store a few possible values, don't use an integer, use a preset. It looks a lot better and makes more sense later on. Now let's move on to the record. Records are great. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is modify variable. We're going to modify our max wave. We're going to set it plus one for each time it runs in here. So let's set the variable. Let's pretend that we pass in unit type. I'm just going to set this up for one. You would do it for uh, five. You would have to do the same thing as you did in the other tutorial, tutorial with add unit to wave and stuff and loop through, find the first available unit and so on. But let's just do it for one now to explain it. So we're going to use our waves variable. Since we set it to be a record, first of all, it's an array. So we have to select the number in the array. There, that's where max wave come in. It's the current wave we're working on. And the member, if you click, double click on member, you can see here unit type, unit amount, special wave mod. So we can do unit type. And then we also had that in be a variable from one to five. So let's just do number one. Um, this is all, also now array, I mean, the unit type is an array. That's why it shows up one to five there. And then, which unit type, our parameter unit type. Okay, it was a lot to set up, but if you think about it, if I have 50, 60 settings for something, or I have 20 second settings for my wave, instead of having them all as global variables here, and then when you go into your set variable list, you have to scroll, scroll through 50, 60 variables in this list. If you look at my tower defense map, you will see tons of variables in this list here. Instead, if we go on this list, all we have is this waves, and we can have as many variables as we want inside this record, and they will not show up in that list, and that's great for organization. So if you're going to have lots of settings, use records. Um, they're easy to use, and it's quite intuitive. Intuitive? Oh, it's early in the morning here. My English isn't quite awake yet. <laughs> So, yeah, um, where was I? Ah, oh, wherever. Anyway, try them out. They're great uh, to get, for instance, that uh, preset that we had, you can also use in conditions. So if we add, an, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it in here. If you have an if then else, if uh, we take our, well, you can use your parameter directly here, special wave mod equals preset, whatever. Uh, I noticed a small thing earlier when I did this. Uh, if we go to variable, waves, uh, max wave, sometimes you will see this list is empty and you'll go like, what? Uh, I should see my thing in here. What you should look at then is this required type up at the top. Just scroll it up. What are you looking for? I'm looking for a preset, so I click preset, and there comes my preset uh, preset special wave mod that is stored inside this waves here. I've noticed this, that sometimes when working on records, this thing is just defaulting to Boolean. So if you can't find it, look up at here at the required type. And if that's equal to, not waves, if that's equal to preset hardened shield, then we're going to do something in here. So yeah, that's preset and records. Hopefully I explained that well enough. I'm not going to go into more detail for this particular tutorial, but I'm going to use presets and records in my future tutorials. So consider this a short introduction to how it works and play around with it, figure out how it works. And yeah, that's all for this time.